Okay, in this video, we're going to go through the disclosures for companies that make investments in the debt securities of other companies. And we'll use an example company to go through here. It's kind of difficult to find an example company with all three types of debt investments. So we'll just talk about it rather than uh, see all types of investments. First, okay, so let's take a look here. Let's remind ourselves of the three types of investments in debt securities, or debt investments. There's a trading, there's something called a trading security, an available for sale security, and a held to maturity security. And recall that these categories relate to how long does management expect to hold on to the debt security before reselling it into the market, okay? Trading security, it's a very short amount of time that management plans to hold the security. Available for sale is somewhere between short and holding it until its maturity date. And of course, held to maturity is you're in a, you pl management plans to, you know, buy the bond or whatever type of debt security it is and hold it to its maturity date. Okay, so they never plan to sell it. And I'll just abbreviate these these uh, categories as TS for trading, AFS for available for sale, and HTM for held to maturity. Okay, these are three different accounting methodologies in accounting for investments in debt securities. Okay, so we'll look at uh, a company. And the company we'll look at is actually Berkshire Hathaway, okay? So again, we're going to look at Berkshire Hathaway Investments. And they make, in addition to making investments in companies' equity securities, they also make investments in companies' debt securities. And if you go to their accounting policy, part, their accounting policy footnote, which is typically footnote one, part D of that footnote is their investments in fixed maturity securities. And fixed maturity is just a smart person word for uh, debt securities, okay? So debt securities have maturity date. So these are uh, securities with a fixed maturity. And there's only one important sentence I wanna show you in this accounting policy. You can read it, because they actually tell you what's a, what the accounting methodology, how the accounting methodology works. But the one sentence I want you to pay attention to is here. As of December 31st, 2019, substantially all of our investments in fixed maturity securities were classified as available for sale. So all of their debt securities are available for sale. They're gonna account for all of them in the same way. And let's take a look at their balance sheet first. Okay, so this is the asset section of the Berkshire Hathaway balance sheet. And you scan down three items and you get to investments in fixed maturity securities on the balance sheet. And this balance sheet is in millions, okay? So that 18.6 is actually $18.6 billion. And that's the book value of their investments in fixed maturity securities. And since it's available for sale, we know, since this is all we know, right, that these investments are available for sale because they just told us in their accounting policy, we know that that $18.6 billion is the fair value of those securities, okay? We hold the investment account at fair value under the available for sale method. So let's take a look at their footnote for Berkshire Hathaway. And here, footnote three is called Investments in Fixed Maturity Securities. And they say investments in fixed maturity securities as of December 31st, 2019, so that's all I'm going to show you, are summarized by type below in millions. So as of December 31st, 2019, they own debt in U.S. Treasury, U.S. government corporations and agencies. They own debt in foreign governments. They own debt in corporate bonds, and they own other types of debt. And this table shows you the cost. So here's the cost. What did it cost them to invest in those debt securities? And then since they've invested in them, they've had unrealized gains and losses while holding those investments, right? The fair value is fluctuating all the time in those securities. So while Berkshire Hathaway holds the investments, some of them go up in value, some of them go down in value. And it's called unrealized because we haven't sold the investments yet. So we only realize gains and losses when we sell the investments and actually receive the cash. Then when you incorporate unrealized gains and losses, you arrive at the fair value of those investments. And you can see that the sum total of all those fair values at December 31st, 2019 is the amount that ties to the balance sheet, right? Because available for sale debt securities are held at fair value. And so first what I'm going to do, so what do we do with these unrealized gains and losses? Okay, that's kind of the complicated part of the accounting. We, for available for sale debt securities, we do not allow these unrealized gains and losses to flow through net income 
unless, until they are realized, okay? So while they are unrealized, we do what's called, we defer these gains and losses. So this $626 million gains of gains and this $14 million of losses, we're going to defer those because they're not realized yet. And so the net amount of gain is 612, right? 626 minus 14. So we're sitting on an unrealized gain of $612 million. That unrealized holding gain is just gonna be held in an account called AOCI, or Accumulated Other Comprehensive Income. So for example, let's just think about the gains. As these investments increased in value, we started with an investment account that was 18073, but we had to increase it to its fair value, 18.685. So we debited the investment account, the asset account, by 612, and we credited AOCI to defer that unrealized holding gain. So that gain, and as well as the loss, so the net gains and losses are just deferred into AOCI under available for sale rules. And now I'm gonna show you exactly where they are. So we've just looked at the footnote. Now we'll actually go back to the balance sheet, and now we're in the shareholders equity section of the balance sheet. And in shareholders equity, there's an account called AOCI, Accumulated Other Comprehensive Income. And you can see that as of December 31st, 2019, it had a negative balance in equity. And an account with a negative balance in equity is a debit balance. This is a debit, oops, sorry. That is a debit balance of 5243000000 The unrealized holding gains and losses on available for sale debt securities are contained within that AOCI account balance, okay? So now let me go to the footnote for AOCI, and here it is, AOCI, a summary of the net changes uh, in after-tax accumulated AOCI attributable to Berkshire Hathaway and shareholders and amounts reclassified out of AOCI for each period, I'm only gonna show you 2019, is as follows. And the column, so here's the, this is a roll forward, okay? It shows you what the beginning of your balance was of AOCI and the end of your balance was in AOCI. And these are all the components of AOCI, okay? There's different components to it. But the one we're interested in is this very first column, unrealized appreciation of investments net. And that's net, of course, of taxes, and it's also net of some losses, okay? And first of all, we can tie total AOCI of 5243 to the balance sheet, okay? So if you sum across all of these columns, you'll come up with 5243. And so this 481 is a component of the ending balance of AOCI as of December 31st, 2019. So how? So now let me show you how we defer these gains and losses. Remember, um, so at the beginning of the year, we had a certain amount of gains and losses that we were deferring, okay? During the year, we had uh, gains and losses in the securities that we're holding. And those gains and losses during the year, they weren't recognized in net income, they were deferred into AOCI. Also during the year, we sold some of those investments. And once we sell an investment, those unrealized holding gains and losses become realized. And we actually reclassify them into the income statement. Uh, so we actually recognize them in the income statement once they become realized. We also recognize the tax effect in the income statement once they become realized, okay? So now let me kind of break down this ending balance of 481. This is a, uh, you can see as a positive number, okay? So this is a credit balance in the equity section of the balance sheet, 481 million. It's less than that $612 million holding gain that we talked about. And the reason is it's a net of taxes. So when you have, when you make gains, okay, and then you sell the investment, you actually have to pay tax on those gains. So the amount that Berkshire Hathaway holds in AOCI is the gains, it's the gains, but it's net of a certain amount of tax that they will have to pay once they realize those gains. So if you take their 612 holding gain, and I actually just plugged or calculated the 131 deferred tax, okay, you'll get that 481 that they're holding in AOCI at the end of the period. And just as an, what we'll have, so here's a thought exercise. If right before year end, December 31st, 2019, right before year end, uh, Warren Buffett made the phone call and said, sell all of our fixed maturity investments, okay? 
we would have realized all of these gains and losses and this $481 million would have flowed directly into the income statement and would have increased net income for the year ended December 31st, 2019 if those unrealized losses became realized before year end, okay? So that actually, as you think of it, if Berkshire Hathaway needed, you know, they had a bad quarter or something and they needed to boost net income, what could they do? They could sell some of these securities, these available for sale debt securities that have unrealized holding gains and that would juice their net income for the quarter if they needed it. Okay, great. So next what we'll do is we'll just do a thought exercise. Is, okay, so we did available for sale accounting, which is the most complicated accounting for debt investments. Let's talk about held to maturity and trading securities. So for held to maturity securities, we're holding them for their entire contract length. So this investment account on the balance sheet, if under HTM, that investment account should just be held at cost not fair value. So under held to maturity accounting treatment, this number, this 18073, would be the number reflected on the balance sheet. The cost of the investments would be reflected on the balance sheet, not the fair value, okay? So the balance sheet number would be different uh, if we used held to maturity. And there would be no recognition of unrealized gains and losses, okay? We would just completely ignore them because we don't plan on cashing them in. We plan on just holding this security until it's maturity. Now let's talk about what would happen if these were classified as trading securities. And the difference there would be these unrealized gains and losses, rather than being deferred in AOCI, held until the investments were uh, liquidated, under the trading security methodology, these gains and losses would have impacted net income in the period that they occurred. So if the price of the bond goes up in value, even if you haven't sold it yet, you would allow your balance sheet to recognize the change in fair value, which we already have under available for sale. But you would also recognize that gain in fair value directly on your income statement in the period in which it occurred, even if you haven't realized that gain yet, okay? So that would be the difference if the company used the trading methodology.